Hello, everyone. Welcome to ICC's Game of the Week with your host, as always, Joel Benjamin. The FIDE World Cup gives an opportunity to very strong players who cannot quite crack the elite round-robin tournaments. The second round produced a matchup of outstanding finishers from the 2013 World Cup. Dmitry Andrekin and Anton Korobov were both knocked out by the tournament winner Vladimir Kramnik in the finals and quarterfinals, respectively. This year, one of them would have a much briefer tournament experience. Who got knocked out and who lived to fight another day? Let's take a look. Okay, so we have the, the, the game one, Korobov playing white against Andrekin. And it is a Slav, one of the most popular openings in, in the world, and certainly we've seen a few of these in this tournament. And A6, this is a move that we've seen from, uh, from time to time in Game of the Week. And one of the ideas is that in a lot of variations, Black will be able to uh, develop the bishop on C8 uh, outside the pawn chain. If Black moves that bishop too quickly, he can run into problems with Queen B3. So this is a little bit of a cagey move. Maybe Black will advance B5 if possible, but uh, you know, keeping a lot of options open. Okay, so Korobov plays e3, which is probably the main move, certainly keeping a lot of options open. And one of the one thing that kind of kind of jump started uh, the move e3 is that it was found that after the re the response b5, which for a while was was very much the main move, that white could play c5. And before white had usually played c5 before black played b5 to try to get the b6 square. But there was a discovery that after bishop g4, white could play queen b3 with a very strong threat of a4, and that led to a lot of problems for black. So since then, black has been looking for alternatives. There is uh, the move e6, which turns it into, into almost um, a form of the Moran, except instead of knight d7, there's the move a6. With, with maybe an idea of taking on c4 and playing b5 and c5. And then the move that Andrekin plays, which is bishop f5. Now, Korobov answers bishop f5 with, with bishop d3, not a, not a particularly challenging move. And uh, if, if white wants to get a little more action going, I think he needs to play here queen b3 to uh, attack the pawn on, uh, on b7. Now, if b5, um, again, white can play c5, which seems to have supplanted the capture on d5 as what white usually tries to do for an advantage. And again, there's the same idea of a4. So usually black plays a5 to, to kick the queen back. But uh, kind of a lot of um, pawn moves to be making. And uh, this certainly leads to uh, a much more tense game than um, than the the players uh, got with the text move, bishop d3. Now, there are also um, some games where white plays bishop e2, and one thing that does is that if black plays a pedestrian move like e6, white could try knight h4 to get the bishop pair. So, in a lot of the games, black plays h6, and then white plays bishop d3. Huh? What's the idea there? Well, if white plays bishop d3 right away, as in the game, there's an option for black to retreat the bishop to g6 and, uh, and, and if take the bishop and take back with the h-pawn, opening up the h-file, but also just bring pawns to the center. But of course here, black would never play bishop to g6 because his pawn structure, his, his pawn structure would be shattered after an exchange on g6. But in any case, this game continued bishop d3, and Andraken did not take it, uh, did not play bishop g6, he just took, which of course is also played in a number of games. Bishop b4, and this move certainly makes a lot of sense because.